أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to Ramadan reflections as we investigate the Quran and the points of management and leadership from this blessed book today being the fourth day of this blessed month of Ramadan in which we have been fasting in the last few days and praying and engaging in reflection and in worship of God we turn our attention today to another verse of the Quran about management and leadership principles and we look at verse number 79 from surah number 3 which is surah Ali Imran the family of Imran the topic which we want to look at is under the theme of a clear abuse of power and now before we go to the verse and its explanation uh, and the un- under the general understanding of the verse is that we realize that in the world that we live in when we compare and contrast the let's say the messengers of God and not only the messengers of God and the imams the divinely appointed representatives but really anybody man or woman who is working to bring people towards God religious preachers the clergy the scholars when we compare and contrast those true religious scholars to charlatans to 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 wannabes to people who are what we would maybe deem in in our common language as scholars for dollars uh, you know compared to devotional scholars we can say or politicians for that matter is that when it comes to the men and women of God that they never call towards themselves in fact the more they become a greater leader greater numbers of people begin to follow them the more humble they become you never see a prophet of God telling his followers to worship him other than God rather than God you will never see a religious scholar in today's day and age who may have a community that he presides over of 5000 10000 20000 who will tell people follow me worship me give me money no they would always be pointing towards god towards the reality compare and contrast that to again scholars for dollars or to politicians when politicians or even the you know the young students or who 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 are on the lecture circuit who come and give talks maybe very inspirational but in the beginning stages they're very humble they're very modest uh, government officials you know they'll make promises and pledges to work for the people to do this for the people to cut taxes to do all of these things but guess what when they get a bit of power when they get a bit of authority when they get a name to themselves when they get some uh you know some credit so when they get some street rep then it's not about you know helping the people it's about themselves it's about you know them getting as much as they can get again whether it be in the political realm or even within the religious realm you have many times these young speakers who learn a few things about Islam and when they get a bit more popular it's not about the message of Allah it's about themselves their own character having people flock around them getting groupies around them now what is the verse of the quran that we want to look at today let us reflect on chapter number 3 surah al imran verse number 79 and then we'll come back and do a brief analysis of how this affects leadership and management principles from the quranic perspective allah says the following statement in the quran ما كان لبشر ان يؤتيه الله الكتاب والحكم والنبوه ثم يقول للناس كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله It is not given to a human being that Allah should give him the book the sovereignty and the prophethood and then he should say to the people be servants to me as we said that when it comes to the divinely appointed men and women of god the saints of god the scholars of the religion whatever religion that may be islam christianity judaism buddhism whatever other religion there is out there those people who call to to the divine to god to whatever they consider god to be would never be people to call to their own worship for people to follow them for people to submit to them to serve them In fact in the Quran we're told that even the prophet Jesus the son of Mary he is clearly quoted as saying to God that I never told people to worship me I never told people to consider me a part of the trinity he rejects every notion of the trinity and of any divinity which people ascribe to him this was not his doing but rather this was the people level you know raising him up to that level which he himself claimed that he did not deserve which was not his status 
if the greatest of prophets such as Jesus, such as Moses, such as Abraham, such as the prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him and all of those prophets, if they were not to call people to themselves, then what about us? What about us as you know people within the faith tradition? And what about us as leaders and managers within a community or within a business or again at the lowest common denominator in our own homes? What we wish to extract from this verse for today, for this fourth day of the month of Ramadan is that clear abuses of power are never okay for anybody to do. It doesn't matter whether you're the prime minister of a country, whether you're the president of what you claim to be the most powerful, uh, you know, superpower of the world, whether you claim to be a king of a country that is sitting on vast reserves of natural resources, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what religion you follow, it doesn't matter who your dad is, what your name is, what your title is, what your lineage is, none of this matters. The point is, is that there can never be an acceptance of clear abuses of power. People who are in power and in positions of authority have no right to misuse that power. And they have to be taken to task. Again, whether that be in the political realm, when our government leaders, as we see in many of our countries, misappropriate our wealth, they take our taxpayers' money, and they squander it on things which do not benefit us as a community, as a country, as a society on a whole, or even whether that be our so-called religious leaders who may even take money from people um, unnecessarily and give it to themselves and their family and lavish themselves with very uh, exquisite lifestyles. Right? You see many times religious preachers who have their own private jets, who have multi-million dollar mansions, who use the money of their community members, of their parishioners, of their congregants to amass their own personal fortune. These clear abuses of power, whether it be the very top of the religious hierarchy all the way down to the local preacher, these have to be condemned when they're seen. They have to be controlled. They have to be stopped. Nobody is above the law. Nobody has the right to you know, use their power in negative ways to influence and buy others. No, this is not what Islam is not for. This is not what any religion was sent to, you know, allow a few people to amass fortunes. And so as we conclude in this fourth day of the month of Ramadan, we realize the fact that abuse of power, which can happen at the level of a home, whether it be a husband abusing his wife, or vice versa, the wife abusing the husband, or God forbid, abusing the children, whether it be at a community level, whether it be in the level of a business, uh, or ultimately at the level of a country and the government, that abuses of power can never be tolerated, can never be accepted, and they have to be called out, and they have to be quashed, and, 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 and completely annihilated before damage can be done to an individual or to a society. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.